Fucking Titanic. The land of Oz. Up to me bollocks in alligators, sharks, snakes, spiders. I better fuck off, I haven't got a passport. Bloody hell, mate. Isn't that Chubby Brown? Why did he run off? I only fuck sheep. Well, I've been deep in the bush before, but it's never smelled like this. What's that? Mum says I've got to play inside today. Chubby's here. Somebody's watching me. Hmm, chance of a cockatoo here. Yeah? <laughs> Melbourne. Apartments overlooking the rent. There's nothing like a small town, and this is nothing like one. Let's ask driver. Forty-seven dollars. Ooh, my drink's on my manager's bill. Thirty-one dollars twenty. Yeah, but there's food on that. You put the food on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weather. It's like Blackpool on a Sunday afternoon. Forty-three dollars. One phone call. He's fucking still going on about the bill. Twenty to five. That means it's yesterday in Newcastle. No one lived here for 24 million years. So who put the clocks back? How many calls? One. There, look, one. Yeah, but it was a birthday. Yes. No one would have believed that in the latter part of the 20th century, a man born of evil could possibly corrupt so many for so long. Our evening begins at the opening. Okay, Mrs. Brown, push. Come on, Mrs. Brown, just one more push. Push, Mrs. Brown. I can see it coming. Push. Come on, Mrs. Brown, just one more push. 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 <laughs> with a line of trees and a belly full of piss. Now, I know a lot of you know I've been around since Captain Cook was a fucking sea cadet. I always remember 1970 walking on stage in England and saying, good evening, my wife's got two cunts and I'm one of them. <laughs> and that's why I'm here today, because they told me to fuck off. <laughs> well, what do you think of the new Roy Brown then? Uh, I lost two stone. Uh, slim, fast and whiskey. I lost two stone and my fucking driving license. The suit's by Versace, that's why the fucking trousers are half-mast. <laughs> I knew some cunt would shoot him, $500 for a pair of fucking jeans. <laughs> I bet he wished he'd designed fucking bulletproof vests now, don't you? <laughs> Did you hear what he said when he was shot? What, red with this? <laughs> He was shot by a homosexual serial killer. Now, what the fucking hell is a homosexual serial killer? Somebody's had too many sugar puffs? <laughs> so that's what HIV stands for. Homing in on Versace. <laughs> what a fucking world we live in, eh? You can order a pizza in this city in five minutes, but if you get knocked down by a car, it takes the ambulance half an hour. 
So why don't you ask the pizza lad to drop you off at the fucking hospital? <laughs> it's a lovely place. I've been here all day. It's fantastic. And the trams are really exciting. A little old lady said to me, I think she was English, she went, excuse me, if I put my foot on that line, will I be electrocuted? I said, you will if you cock your other fucking leg over that wire, do you? <laughs> I thought I spotted my first kangaroo. I went, fucking hell. My mate, it's a greyhound having a shit. <laughs> the first thing I knew about Australia was in 1965. Somebody called Rolf Harris came to England and he was that bloke who sang all them songs that were fucking sex mad. You know, every song had a ooh, uh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh. <laughs> Tie me kangaroo down spot. What the fucking hell was that all about? Two little boys, dirty bastard. <laughs> There's a big thing going on in England at the moment about uh, road rage. It's fucking happened to me two weeks ago. Two blokes jumped out of the car. Hey, fat fucker! You took over on the fucking in fucking fucking side there. You fucking fat fucking 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 bastard. I said, piss off, and I'm not blowing into that bag either, officer. <laughs> Copper said, we've been following you for two miles. I said, are you fucking lost? <laughs> no airbag. I said, no, I fucking dropped her off at the mother's. <laughs> Is that your dog? I've got this dog. I don't know if you have an animal at home. It took me three years to teach that fucking dog to sit. Every day. Sit, 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 sit. The cunt won't stand now. I took him to see that movie by Walt Disney, 96 Dalmatians. Apparently there was 101, but five of them broke away and called themselves the fucking Spice Girls. <laughs> Look at all the lads clapping, you shag them. <laughs> the best shag I ever had, I walked in this pub one night and... Uh, she stood at the bar. I think she was on the game, but wasn't doing very well. A pimp had a larder, you know. <laughs> She's had a mastectomy, that's a breast removed. I went, hi, nice tit. <laughs> she had a long, fair coat on. I went, like your coat. She said, it's rabbit. I said, he must have been a big fucker. <laughs> and she gave me that look when I knew she really wanted me to fuck off. But be honest, lads, we're animals, aren't we? I mean, minges are like kebabs. <laughs> Juicy, full of bits of meat. You only want to eat one when you're fucking pissed, don't you? <laughs> I once went out with an Australian girl who was working in London, right? They called her Valerie Dingle. They called her VD for short. <laughs> she was a boomerang champion. That's why it fucking keeps coming back. I remember giving her the pad. I'm stood at the bar, had a couple of pints. I went, hi, baby, what I wouldn't give for a tight, wet pussy. She said, me too, mine's like a fucking enamel bucket, Chubbs. <laughs> I slipped my hand down the jeans. I thought I'd take advantage of the girl. <laughs> she said, if you're trying to turn me on, it's the second hole you come to. <laughs> she said, my friend's over there, do you mind if she joins us? I said, ah, go on, I'm thinking, fuck it, I'll have three in a bed. Hmm. Last time I had three in a bed, I fucked a schizophrenic. <laughs> so the girl come over, very tall girl, she went, hi, are you him? I went, yes. Are you married? I said I was, but her fucking mother broke us up. I was shagging her and the wife walked in. <laughs> and you? She said, I can't keep a man, I'm too kinky. I like kinky sex. I went, <laughs> snap. <laughs> so we went back to her mother. She come out the bathroom, God's on her. Leather bra, leather crutches, knickers, big hairy backy pouch, fucking. <laughs> Clock spring sticking out the side. <laughs> Stunk a fish. 
and a whip. I went, fucking hell. See ya. She thought you were kinky. I said, I am. I want your dog off and shit in your pillowcase. It's a world we're living, isn't it? Okay, now. Get a man on the moon, yet we can't get one on fucking KD Lang. <laughs> we went to New York, you know, we did a show in New York. If you ever shake hands with anybody in New York, count your bastard fingers when you bring your arm back. <laughs> and we hired a car, and we crashed because we were on the wrong side of the road. And this big young girl, hey, fat motherfucker. But well, shows you how blind he was. Have you seen her, ma'am? You, you wouldn't fuck her. We went into a record shop. We were so far behind the times. In the record shop, they had uh, country and western, jazz, funk, soul, blues, girl bands, men bands, porn or rap. I went, fuck's that porn or rap? There's that many gangs in Harlem, 2,000 gangs, that they make these violent records, and the more violent it is, the better it is, and it goes to number one. Now, at number one this week is Little Kitty. I'll give you a blast. This is a blast of what's going on in New York. This is... Porno Fun. Girl, what you thinking when the tongue's in the pussy and the dick don't fit? You're a motherfucker hussy, loose with the juice. Don't be scared of the prick. I'll lick your clit where the dick make you sick. Licky, licky, licky on me dicky, dicky, dicky. I come on, you titch your bitch to ras. Up your ass, make you wetter. Lick your nipples through your sweater. Cause I'm a black motherfucker sex machine. And the equivalent in this country is probably, I'm a wanker, I'm a wanker. <laughs> Well, I was born in the thirties, boys and girls, when we had fuck all. Fuck all! Fuck all! Fuck all! The only thing my parents ever told me about sex was, you won't be getting any. <laughs> Somebody said to my father, what's Roy going to be when he leaves school? He said, about fucking 48. I said, I want to be like you when I leave school, Dad. He said, an engine driver. I said, no, no, I want to shag that woman next door when our mum's out shopping. <laughs> they must have thought I was thick. They had TGIF, promise you. Toes go in first. <laughs> Kids called me Porky at school, and not because I was fat. I was caught doing something revolting to a pig. <laughs> I still fucking married her. Eh? What kind of a life do you think I've had? When I come home, I caught my best friend <laughs> shagging my wife. I said, get down, Rex. <laughs> I was in all of Sunday papers. We had a fight at the airport. I gave her a fucking fat lip to match her waist. <laughs> the police come round. Do you give your wife a black eye? I said, did oh, fuck? She had to fight me for that. She fucked off and she did the nastiest trick I think a woman can do to a man. She fucked off and took the remote control for the TV. <laughs> the next week I was watching the match. She deliberately passed the house switching the fucking channels over. <laughs> Couple of years ago we were trying for a baby, right? I mean, I was trying. She was just fucking lying there. <laughs> She'd make a good ventriloquist. Her fucking lips never budge. <laughs> Funny enough, I can remember, you know, when a tit stuck out, her fucking hair was down here. Now her hair sticks out, her fucking tits are down here. <laughs> Madonna got her nipples pierced, she got her nipples pierced, but she keeps catching a fucking toe in it. <laughs> we love you girls, but you're fucking funny, you know. In the summer, when it's really hot, watch a woman. She'll get the deodorant out of her handbag and she'll go... Well, you can go to the chemist now and you can get vanilla, strawberry, lime, cherry. My wife bought fucking tuna. <laughs> and I'll give you a tip, girls, as well. A tip from Chubbs. 
When you get to 30, your body sags. And you know you can tell. Stand in a straight, stand straight like that. And get a ballpoint pen and put it under your tit. And if it falls on the floor, you know your body's not sagging. But if it sticks, it's fucking sagging. <laughs> I said to the other day, you haven't seen the fucking typewriter, have you? She's going through the change at the moment. You call them PMTs. I said, uh, have a nice day. Don't you fucking tell me what to have. <laughs> she sent me the chemist for some tampons. There was only eight in the box. It was supposed to be ten. Thanks to you, I nearly fucking bled to death. <laughs> She's as thick as shit. I told her black underwear turned me on. She never washed me fucking vest for a fortnight. <laughs> We live on a rough housing estate, as you well know. In fact, if there's a deposit on a house, it'll come from a fucking pigeon's ass. <laughs> My mate rang me the other day. You're not watching Sky Television, are you, Chubbs? I said, how oh, the fuck do you know? He said, a bloke's just climbed off your wall with it. <laughs> Police were round. Uh, do you know your wife fell out the bedroom window, Chubbs? I went, fucking hell, I thought I'd gone deaf. Coppers are like that, aren't they, when they're told you. Copper never looks at your face, you know. He's looking around the house because that's, that's, that's the training. That's how they're trained. Uh, right, Chubbs. Um, been a lot of houses broken on this estate. They've all had the back kitchen windows broken and there's a lot of stuff gone missing. Uh, could you tell me where you were between nine and ten? I said, fucking school. Your neighbours seem to be away. Well, George and Margaret, they, they won't fly and they won't go on a ferry because they're frightened of fucking death. So they always go to Scotland and they do a little bit of walking. And I always look after the house. Should be fat fucking neighbourhood bastard watch. <laughs> so the other morning, I'm looking out in the back kitchen when the my Alsatian dog has his fucking rabbit in his mouth. <laughs> I went, no, you twat! I picked the house brick up like you were. Fucking get him. Got the fucking rabbit off the dog, but he's brown bread, dead. I sellotaped its head back on. <laughs> washed it in fairy liquid. Put it back in the hutch. Thought, well, looks all right. Monday morning, come to the door. I said, hey, Roy. I went, ah, hey, all right. <laughs> I've had a death in the family. I went, oh, fucking hell. Your mother. No, Fluffy the rabbit. Man, he died before we went away and I didn't have time to tell you. I buried him, but some cunts took him up, washed him and put him back in the fucking... <laughs> no, it might look. I'll have to go upstairs. A man's just told me there's a place here called Walla Walla. I said I heard you the first time, mate. Another age homosexual friend thinking about me. This happens to be one of the best views in Melbourne. And this isn't bad either. The waitress come over, roll us in, faggot him out, scratching him in. I went, have you an itchy fanny? She said, only what's on the fucking menu. <laughs> I said, do you have spicy sausage? She said, oh, spicy sausage makes my fuzzy hair stand on end. I went, that's fucking funny. Fuzzy hair makes my fucking sausage stand on end. <laughs> my mate looked at the menu and went, oh, look at that. They've named the soup after you. One ton. <laughs> Fuck off. There's a couple on the next table and you can always tell I'm an eavesdropper. I'm always watching and observing people. And this couple had just met and he's after a shag and he's saying uh, pass the sugar sugar I went fucking hell <laughs> pass the honey honey I went he's making me fucking sick <laughs> the waiter said you're only jealous you've never spoken to a girl like that I said pass the fucking tea bag We always go for our holidays down in Tenerife and all that. And last year we went on a cruise. She played fuck like when the gunboards cut the nets. But you know. 
It's similar weather to here, and that's the fact I saw a midget buying ice cream and sitting in the cunt. <laughs> Went to Spain, there was a bullfight on, cost my wife the, the fucking nosy. She's looking over the side, she fell in. The bull spots her and attacks her. Fucking hell. Loaf, hoof, hoof, loaf, hoof. Blood, guts, and bag, passports all over the place. <laughs> the hospital worked all night, but the fucking bull died. <laughs> I've got kids and all, I have a, a little boy there, and um, well, he's kept us together. Neither of us wanted fucking custody of him. <laughs> he knocked my golf bag over the other day, she said, your son has your balls! I said, that's funny, they all say he fucking looks like you! <laughs> Don't kids drop you in the shit? We walked in the house and his mother said, uh, did you enjoy the zoo? He went, oh yeah, and one of dad's horses come in ten to one. <laughs> Yeah, she said to him one day, what are you doing? He said, I was just wondering, I was just, I was just wondering, ma'am. Because last night when I passed the bedroom door, you, you were jumping up and down on my dad's belly. She said, because your daddy has a big belly. And your mummy has to jump up and down on it to flatten it. She said, well that's daft, because when you go to the shops, the barrel next door pumps it up again. Imagine Heaven's Gate, there's a sign above Heaven's Gate, and all those men on earth who've been dominated by their wives stand in this queue, and this queue's a fucking mile long. And above the other gate, it went, all those men who have not been dominated by their wives stand in this queue, and there's one little fellow with a tash and a boulder hat. <laughs> St. Peter said, the fuck do you want? He said, our last told me to stand here. When we stopped in Sydney, we found a little boarding house near the Bondi Beach, and uh, you, you, you seem to know about boarding houses these days, don't you? You know, you look for the cleanliness and all that. And as we walked in, I said, hi, and uh, do you have a TV in the room? He said, no, but there's a cockfight in the lounge at seven. <laughs> oh, right. Walked in, walked in the bedroom, and there was a crucifix above the bed, and some fucker had pinched Jesus off it. <laughs> I was that bored, I sent down for another Bible. Have you read the Bible? <laughs> the cunt dies in the end. <laughs> S sorry, I fucking spoiled it for you there, didn't I? <laughs> Is there a God? Think about life. Is there a fucking God? This bloke called God pals his kid off with some unemployed camp to call fucking Joseph. <laughs> Poor fucking Joseph, yeah. Not working. Dad can't even afford a fucking shed or a house. Lives in a barn. When he comes back from the Bethlehem Unemployment Centre, there's three blokes outside the band were fucking prezies. So he comes home, Joseph, not in a very good fucking mood, there's no going. Says to his wife, oh, fuck's going on? I'm unemployed, you were ordering stuff out the fucking catalogue. <laughs> Do you believe all this? Jesus gets to school, and Jesus gets to school, oh, who's your dad? Oh, well, there's a bit of a fucking problem there, actually. <laughs> So twelve lads knock around with him. Well, I can't believe that. Twelve lads will knock around with anybody who turns fucking water into wine. I mean, lads will knock around with any fucker who gets him a drink for fuck all. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were in this room. We're getting back to this room. We were in this room. I don't know who was in the room next door to us, but Christ, could he shag? I could hear the headboard. Boom, 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 boom. And I give him a round of applause, but you can't clap with fucking one hand, can you? I did ask her, girls, I did ask her, I said, are we making love? I'm too tired. I said, who fucking asked you to move? <laughs> Howie, I'll give you the wheelbarrow position. What's that? I said, well, according to the lads, it's quite good. I come behind you and I enter you from the back. You can watch home and away. <laughs> Tool catches the clit. Good for you, good for me. She said, no, it's good for no fucker because I'm not doing it. I said, no, because you're a miserable split ass. <laughs> she could see I was getting annoyed, so she went, no, oh, come on then. But don't push me past me fucking mothers. <laughs> mm. 
Women are funny though, aren't they? When was the last time you went to a supermarket? Who's this twat that welds all them fucking baskets together? I'm walking around fucking Asda with about 50 bastard basket men. You have to have a fucking pound to get your basket free. Do you know, if shit was expensive, these governments would tax your fucking arsehole, wouldn't it? And another thing about fucking shopping with your wife, you can't pick fuck all. Have you noticed that, lads? You've got to get something off the shelf. You can put that back. I thought we'd have some paste. We've got some in the house. Put the fucker back. So we're walking around the supermarket, and I'm looking at all the signs. Bigger is better. Not if you've got a boil and a crack of your ass, it isn't. <laughs> if you don't see it, ask for it. I got me fucking face slapped three times. <laughs> I said to the girl on the till, have you got turkey's breast? She said, no, these are my own tits. Fuck off. She's looking in the freezer section. She said, I don't like the look of the halibut. I said, if you're going for looks, buy a fucking goldfish. <laughs> Women say the fucking stupidest things. Though. How many times has your wife or your girlfriend come out with this one? Don't look now, but look who's over there. What about when you've lost something? What are you looking for? My wallet. Well, when did you last see it? <laughs> well, if I fucking knew that, I wouldn't be fucking looking for it, would I, you stupid split ass? <laughs> I've noticed all Australians say to you, catch you later. Think I'm a fucking cricket ball? <laughs> all them saints crease me. Only the good die young. Oh, so everybody over 50 is a twat, eh? You can kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> I didn't do fucking Fred West any good. <laughs> Tighter than a duck's ass. Who's responsible for fucking finding that out? <laughs> let's have one for the road. What an excuse to get pissed. Hey, let's have another fucker for the pavement. <laughs> let's get rat ass. We'll have a fucker for the gate. Soon be Christmas. You know what the new toy is in England this year? Divorced Barbie. Comes with all Ken's accessories. <laughs> they said to me down at the gym, Chubby, do you want to be Santa Claus this Christmas? I went, oh, yeah. I said, well, we've got the gear for you. We've got the sack. And I went off. And I went into the ladies' section. I said, my sack's full. Does anybody want a present? <laughs> said, Chubby, fuck off. As the Jewish paedophile said, hey, go careful of those toffees, son. <laughs> the phone rang at the factory. Can I speak to Alan Clark, please? The boss. Alan! Phone for you! Hello? It's George, your neighbour. What's the matter, George? So he's sitting down. What's the matter, George? I think you should sit down. I looked out the window this morning, and uh, your wife's hung herself with a clothesline. <gasps> Do us a favour, if it rains, fucking bring her in. I've got a lift off this hell's angel. God, I hope he's had a bath. Morning! Morning! Hi, son! Hello, girl! Hi! Morning! They're all after Chubby's red helmet. Look, ma'am! No hands! Excuse me! Where's the Regal Theatre? How the hell should I know? Ah, walk off. Hey, that does. So, we can just... so, Brett will probably fly the gauze in and out. Local Something advertising. like 400 tickets. 380 were sold on the strength of the internet alone. Great. In my time here, I've never seen uh, the, you know, yeah. interest. And we got the talk back to yeah. the best two fellas yeah. on stage. Yeah. Good. 
Well, you know my name's Roy Brown and my ambition in life is to be the last man on earth. I want to find out if all these women were telling the truth when they said I wouldn't fuck you. I mean, sat in the dressing room there, there's mirrors on the door, mirrors on the ceiling, mirrors on the walls. I've got a hard on staring at my own fucking ass. <laughs> I'm sorry, a little bit late starting tonight, but a bit of a blowout on the highway. Fucking Vindaloo. <laughs> Went to an Indian restaurant. I love Indian food, but it doesn't have time to form a fucking turd, does it? <laughs> They've been putting cat food in the curry and all. I got the shits this morning. I had this edge to cover it with fucking soil. <laughs> we only went to the Indian because it was celebrating 50 years of independence from British rule. I said, can I have a look at the menu? He said, get it your fucking self. <laughs> Feel like a monster from Jurassic Park this morning. I've got a fucking megasaurus. <laughs> I can understand why you live here. When the agent said, do you want to go to Perth? I, I thought, well, Scotland, you know. Fucking long way off there, isn't it? <laughs> We're in a place called Fremantle today, and we're walking along the seafront, and we stopped at a little cafe. I'm not saying the food was the shits, but there was a sign on the door. Sorry, we're open. <laughs> the carrot cakes had had the fucking rabbit's foot attached. <laughs> what a lovely crowd. Oh, yeah, let's wreck the fucking place. <laughs> Hang on, some bastards beat us to it. I'm not a ladies' man. I thought foreplay was scream, you bitch, and I'll fucking knife you. <laughs> In fact, I had unprotected sex the other night. I was wanking away and my fucking rubber glove come off. <laughs> this lad's talking to his friend. He said, you look tired. He said, oh, you'd be tired if you got a shag. <laughs> you, you never got a shag. Fucking did. Did so? You did not. Fucking did. What time did you leave me last night? Twenty past eleven. Ah, ah, ah. My bus goes at five past. I fucking missed the bus. So I walked home. And you know I had a drink. Well, I'm crossing the railway lines. Bird tried the railway lines. Fucking tits. Big airy fanny. <laughs> Undunna. Went back to the flat, scuttled her over the couch. <laughs> fucked her on the coffee table. Tit wank. <laughs> said, blow job. He said, oh, I, I couldn't find her head. <laughs> That's the last fucking clean joke I'm telling, so fuck off. Hi. <laughs> You thought Lady Di's funeral was depressing. This fucking act will kill you, won't it? <laughs> hey, I have a lot in common with Lady Di. The press killed my mother. She was hiding and the fucking thing had run the back of the head. <laughs> Two and a half million people watched that funeral by satellite. That's all down to Charles' ears, is that? <laughs> That's who Mike Tyson's fighting next, Prince Charles, because he's the only one with ears enough to go fucking 12 rounds. <laughs> A lot of flies in this town, isn't it? You haven't built this city on a turd by any chance, have you? <laughs> I'm walking on the seafront and uh, fucking hell, somebody said, That's the Fremantle wind, the doctor. I said, No, it's me, I've shit. <laughs> so the gynecologist is going around the ward. Went the first bed. Morning, Mrs. Richardson. Picks up the chart. Hmm. Your baby's due on November the 12th, eh? Are you open for a boy or a girl? She said, well, I'm not really bothered as long as he's healthy. Oh, that's good. Well, I'll see you on November the 12th. Don't worry about everything. We'll look after you. And the next pet. Good morning, Mrs. Foster. How are you? I'm all right. See ya. Baby's due on November the 12th. Same as Mrs. Richardson. She said, yes, we're friends. Oh, I see. Yeah. Ooh. Bit of a coincidence there, then. <laughs> boy or a girl? Well, we want a boy because we already have a girl. Well, looks like it's going to be a busy day for me. Went the next bed. Hello, Mrs. Tate, how are you? Baby's due on 12th of November. Okay, now. <laughs> I think I'll need a bit of help here. Mrs. Foster, Mrs. Richards. She said, oh, yes, we're all friends. 
Oh, fucking hell. Do you want to buy her a girl? She said, I'm not bothered. Fuck for that. <laughs> Went the next bed. <laughs> One of Mrs. Pearson. Oh! Your baby's not due till the 15th of November. She said, no, I never went on the bus trip. <laughs> so these two fellas are walking on the road. One says, okay, now, you shit. <laughs> you a cheeky cunt. <laughs> no. <sighs> she fucking reek. <laughs> Don't. You've shit. I fucking haven't. <laughs> Drop your fucking trousers. Oh, look at that! Fucking big Ted in your underpants. He went, oh, did you mean today? <laughs> look at the women dressing me with their eyes. I'm a family man myself. Uh, I'm a granddad now. Uh, my daughter had a little boy last Sunday, and uh, we call him Thomas, Matthew, David, Alan, William, Richard, and Robert. We, wa we wanted to name him after all the lads that were in the gangbang, you know. <laughs> I said, Well, what were you doing up a back alley letting six lads fuck you? She said, Oh, Dad, it was pure luck. <laughs> She's in labour three days, we had to shave a minge twice. Fifteen pound eight ounces. Had to christen the fucking thing at the Sea Life Centre. <laughs> we had a bit of a barbecue, you know, instead of like booging a hotel. I don't know where she got the beef from, but all the women were rubbing themselves against the fucking fence. <laughs> Talking to Nigel Ben, the boxer. I don't know if you know him. I was in the airport. I said, No, Nigel, how are you doing? He said, I'm fucking old, fucking light chaps. So do you see yourself boxing anymore? Fucking wooden and fucking thoughts how you can't. I said, do you see yourself knocking anybody out anymore? Fucking wooden and fucking thoughts. I said, right, pass the salt, ugly twat. <laughs> Is that for me, Mick? Excuse me, boys. Somebody has to have a drink. It may as well be me. Thank you. I'll, ju I'll just have a quick slayer. <coughs> Not that I like a drink. Oh. <coughs> I can't swim, but I know every fucking dive around here. <laughs> 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 uh, I was reading your local paper and it said in two hours you can have computer sex. That is, you ring this number and they send you a form and you put all your details down and they send you a photograph of a girl who lives in the vicinity who will have sex with you. I got a photo back in an hour. Me fucking wrist. <laughs> hey, what a cracking crowd you are, God. It was a year ago last Saturday that I actually lost my father, boys and girls, and, uh, I'll, I'll, well, I'll never forget it because... I won a fucking tenner on the lottery! Why? <laughs> what? 97 he was. I said that fucking bungee jump would kill him. <laughs> Fancy being cured of conservation and not knowing. Hmm. <laughs> Cut him down, he was covered in shit. My father had the same job for 50 years. 50 years, you can't imagine somebody having the same job. The day he retired, they gave him a watch, a gold watch. Dad said, it's a quarter of an hour slow. The bloke said, hey, you were fucking late one morning, you know. <laughs> imagine this lad getting up on the morning. He, he, he's ratty with himself anyway. He went, are you ready? Wife said, what? We're flying fishing, me, you and the dog. She said, I'm not going out in this bastard weather. Huh. <sighs> I played golf on Friday. Your fucking face was longer than the motorway. <laughs> Saturday when I went to the match, I never go anywhere with you. You all out with the lads. You don't come in. You please your fucking self when you come in. Me, you and the dog, we'll go on the Thursday, right? You can bring some sandwiches and a flask and you'll enjoy it. It's so quiet, you can hear your fucking hair grow. <laughs> well, I'm not going out in this weather. Oh, fucking. Well, he said, if I'm stopping in, I want a shag. <laughs> I know it's not Saturday and you've had a bath. Or a blowjob. Being a quick-thinking woman, she went, well, a shag's three minutes, a blowjob's about 20 seconds. I'll get it over and done with. I'll give it a blowjob. He went, zip. 
That fucking tears awful, he said. I know. Fucking dog didn't want to go either. If you haven't seen that movie yet, The Full Monty, go and see it. It's really fucking funny. It's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant. I have a friend who's like that who watches all the movies. You, I mean, he, he hires the, the video. And if he goes to the showcase cinema where there's about ten movies on, he'll, he'll pay for one and then fucking sneak into the next one. <laughs> so he's, he, he sees about five films <laughs> and he's only paid for one. But when you talk to him, he talks in riddles. I bumped into him the other day in Tex... Te uh, te te what do you call that fucking garage? Texaco, of course. I went, hey, John, how you doing? All right. He went, ah, it's Do you know, once upon a time in America, my cousin Vinny was home alone. Rocky was home alone, too. This is the greatest story ever told. This is a love story about an innocent man when Harry met Sally in Philadelphia. It was a fatal attraction. She was a pretty woman with E.T. I said, E.T.? He said, extra chest. She was a single white female with a death wish. She deceived Alfie, the jazz singer, with a dirty dance and indecent proposal. She gave personal services to a few good men. Batman, Rain Man, City Slickers. She had the best little house in Texas, Night of Fire. She was no jewel in a crown. She was no fish called Wonder, but she fucked like a Roger Rabbit. You say, talk about Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, she was no Mrs. Delphire. But see, the bodyguard, Laston Mohegan's cost care fear with his War of the Rose, he informed the Godfather Scarface, like gorillas in the mist, reservoir dogs who were looking for revenge. Talk about lethal weapons, one, two, and three. To be honest with you, Bilko, Rambo, and Psycho, they were all as bad. See, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, was down and out in Beverly Hills, too. He took trains, boats, and planes to Manhattan on the waterfront on Golden Pond with Rob Roy Braveheart. Because, see, when you're in the firing line, it's good and bad as only, and only good die young. See, Yentl, who was on Schindler's List, was entertaining Mrs. Sloan, a robocop. Went a bridge too far. She said, the twins. They were switched to birth. The next again, why don't they just throw Mama from the train? She was determined that this couldn't happen to her vet. Their daddy two shoes, who was a pet detective with the FBI, went to Africa in the land of time, forgot to free Willie, in a town called Alice. Alice? Who the fuck's Alice? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are kind. Anybody fancy a Chinese? Mind those flats! God, I'd love somewhere to eat. Man, my throat feels as if it's being cut. Ah, licorice. That was dried deer's penis. On in. What's that look? Sushi? This beer is filthy. The Japanese swam it during the war, like two nips that passed in the shite. What's this? Either the fucking engine. What you're witnessing here is the Hong Kong monster. It's a bit like your Loch Ness monster, but it lies below the concrete and pisses 20 feet in the air. It's absolutely breathtaking. Chinese 69 to Kanju. Oh. Oh, oh, look at that. Fish and chips. Might get some of them on the way back. This is fucking awful. It's nice for a change. I'll never believe how far I've come for a fucking takeaway, will she? <laughs> I said I was popping round the fucking corner. And yesterday afternoon we arrived and like, we're going along the high street. We're still in the fucking plane, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure that was washing on the fucking wings. We had our first mealie last night. The size of the prawn balls. Fucking hell. How do they get the legs open that far? It was a little Japanese restaurant and it said sushi, which is raw fish, which is obviously invented by a cafe. It didn't have a fucking oven. <laughs> they said in Rome, do as the Romans do, so we got a rickshaw ride today. Oh, it's fucking funny that, isn't it? Trust my luck, the Hong Kong police pulled him off for not having enough tread on his fucking sandals. 
The British kids were running alongside trying to get the fucking hubcaps off the wheels. <laughs> I've been really looking forward to this tonight, I really have. Some good looking split asses in, isn't it? <laughs> you know why women have more wrinkles than men? Because they keep going, oh, I'm not sucking that. <laughs> I've just found out that women don't fart until they're married. Well, they don't have arseholes until they're married. <laughs> hey, if I don't get a shag tonight. Found myself a little Filipino girl last night. We were in bed. I said, I fancy a 69. <laughs> she said, well, if you do, you can get out of bed and cook the cunt yourself. <laughs> so, you know, they, you get some rumours at home. Oh, what are you going to Hong Kong? Oh, they eat the pets. <laughs> they eat their animals. The best-selling book there is How to Walk Your Dog. <laughs> Tradition has it here that you can eat a meal and spit the bones out on the table, and everybody does that. So last night I got dog and chips. <laughs> and I spit the bones out on the table, and I thought, it's a shame, the dog would have loved them. <laughs> mm. When I got pulled up in a car the other day, have you got a dog at home? Blow in a dog's face. <laughs> dogs always go, who's twat? <laughs> yeah, put them in the car, they always want to stick the fucking daft heads out the window, don't they? <laughs> I'll never understand women, will you? I mean, if the Lord really wanted us to lick pussy, why didn't he make it taste like something that gets us going? <laughs> like a pint of best bitter. Or smell like something that drives us wild. A Sunday dinner with fucking Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> My missus is fucking useless when it comes to sex. I bought her a book on oral sex. I had to pull it out of her mouth. <laughs> I gave her the tomato sauce bottle. I said, I want you to practice oral sex with the tomato sauce bottle. I said, because it's a natural way of loving each other. She said, all right. I come in on the Wednesday night from the dog and dog. She said, uh, I'm giving you oral. We got into bed, she grabbed me cock, she went. <laughs> I shagged her the other night and I said, are you fucking enjoying this? She said, what? Oh, oh, no, oh, uh, oh more housekeeping. <laughs> yes, we love you girls, but keep out of the sea, you're making fucking fish smell. When they're in trouble in Rwanda, and Buwanda, and Duwanda, and Suwanda, McDonald's were the first to help. They sent two million boxes of straws out there. The government wrote back and said, thanks for the leg warmers. <laughs> well, there wouldn't be any starvation if the fucking skinny bastards moved next door to a fucking supermarket like the fucking rest of us have had to. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Fucking tax dodgers. <laughs> I think I've said the wrong fucking thing there, haven't I? <laughs> if I don't get beaten up tonight, I never fucking will. <laughs> People say the fucking daftest things. I was passing the box office at ten past six, and the woman said, two seats for Chubby Brown. She said, it was standing room only. She said, is that together? <laughs> I fucking swear down this happened on the aeroplane. The stewardess said, all those requiring wheelchairs, would you please stay in your seats? <laughs> I was in the pizza hut and this fella said, uh, deep fried pizza please. She said, should I cut it into six or four? He said, only four. We couldn't eat six. <laughs> Thick as shit. I was in a pub the other night. This in the hotel is the only thing she's never fucking gone down on. <laughs> Uh, I met her at eight o'clock. I'm not saying she was ugly, but fucking hell. She couldn't have lowered Quasimodo out of a fucking burning shed. Her face looked like a neck had spewed up. She said, what's your aftershave? I said, it's called come to me. She said, well, it doesn't smell like fucking come to me. We went down to Bondi Beach and I fucking scuttled her. I said, take that. 
she let out one of them uh, funny farts. <laughs> I didn't mind. It blew the sand off me bollocks. The last good shag I had was New Year's Eve last year. We had a party around the house. And the fucking fanny. Oh, the split asses. Woo! The fucking didn't turn up. <laughs> the wife said, we'll have to play hide and seek. I said, who the fuck would look for you? <laughs> I was a pissed. I was walking around in the fucking baby walker all night. Hey, what a great night. I'll never forget it. Two of my wife's fat friends turned up. Well, the lesbians, I think. One of them dropped a handbag and a vibrator fell out. Fucking hell. It was like a Vicks nasal spray for an elephant. <laughs> we all ended up in bed together. You know what it's like when you're pissed. I had a great shag, but I didn't know to thank. <laughs> Somebody at the party had a big cock. The bin liner was missing. Half past five in the morning, one of the lads went, I'm off, Chubbs. Thanks, great do, fantastic. You must have some fucking money, you. Gold toilet, he'd shit him, he'd trombone. <laughs> I'd been in the city centre five minutes, and a fellow went, excuse me, uh, you haven't got $20 for a sandwich. I said, let us have a look at it. <laughs> I took a bite fuck's this? Said crab paste. I got it at the chemist. <laughs> I think he was a bit of a tramp. These lads were spitting on him. He went, fuck off. If I wanted a bath, I'd ask. <laughs> but people are funny when they want money. He pulled a tin out. He went, excuse me, I'm collecting for the people of Rwanda. I went, <laughs> you are. You fucking name one of them. He said, it's all right for you. They've had fuck all the week for six months now there, you fat bastard. I said, don't talk out of your bell end. How come every time they're on the TV, the faces are covered in flies? <laughs> Work it out, somebody's having a shit. <laughs> well, as Kidderminster is famous for carpets and Sheffield for steel, where I live is famous for the sleeping bag and I fucking married it. No, don't laugh at that joke, please, because she's got piles and she's going through a fucking rough passage. <laughs> I said to her the other day, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to learn karate to protect your virginity. She said, I wish you'd mind your own fucking business. <laughs> Coming from the bingo the other night, she's getting changed. I went, uh, have you had a fuck in the cemetery? <laughs> no. She went bright red. I said, how come your ass died in 1947? <laughs> The woman next door to me was raped in broad daylight. Man, she didn't know the check bounced. <laughs> bit like Sydney where I live. Very fucking rough, you know. You have to protect yourself. But I did a bit of boxing when I left school. I was like that Prince Nazim, you know. When I took up boxing, I thought, keep out of the blocks. Rode for about three or four rounds. Fifth round, attacked the fucker. But during the first round, some bastard told him I was behind the stove. I relied on two things when I was boxing. Speed and the fucking St. John's Ambulance Brigade. <laughs> I think the ref must have had money on me because when I got knocked down, he went, Nine, ten, Jack, Queen, King, you fat twat. <laughs> you have to live every day as if you last. I had to go to a funeral last Tuesday. A friend of mine passed away. A brilliant door-to-door -door salesman. That's why we couldn't bury him. He wouldn't take his fucking foot out the lid. <laughs> I told and Dean have a lot to thank him for. They were working with him when he said, How are you, pair of cunts? Get your skates on. <laughs> then were the days when Jerry Lee Lewis married his 13 year old cousin. Dirty bastard. 12, yeah. <laughs> Ball funny. <laughs> Sorry. Shades of Michael Jackson coming out there. Can't wait to get to heaven and tell Elvis who his fucking daughter married. <laughs> I've got my hand 
down Billy's jeans. Mm. America's a fucking funny place. The Americans invent a stealth bomber that flies invisibly, crashes, no cunt knows where it is. <laughs> My America, e, when we went to Los Angeles, well, I went to Los Angeles because uh, Pamela Anderson was advertising for somebody to shave a minge. <laughs> so I applied and they said, stand outside the Empire State Building. I said, that's in New York. So said, that's where the fucking queue ends. <laughs> In America, they sell organs for cash, so I've put a bid in for Tommy Lee's cock. <laughs> I like all the American programs and I like The Simpsons. That fucking OJ looks nothing like the rest of them, does he? <laughs> Princess Fergie just wrote to the Queen and said, Will you forgive me for all the past troubles I've caused? She said, I've already forgiven you. I've got a weekend in Paris for you. There's the keys to me Mercedes and fucking George Best is driving the car. <laughs> the fucking world we live in. The cloned sheep in Scotland. Man, you, these Scottish farmers will do anything for an extra shag on a fucking Saturday, you know. <laughs> All right, mate. I've said the wrong fucking thing here, haven't I? I just saw the blade. There's always something going on. I switched your radio on yesterday. They announced the Gay Olympics in Sydney. So you're getting the Gay Olympics here. Okay, now. Javelin, javel out. <laughs> There'll be a lot of fucking drag racing going on that week. Won't <laughs> None of the lads will enter the fucking coxless pairs, will they? <laughs> Tossing the cable. <laughs> All these big fat lesbian women shot putting where they're going to fucking put it. Qantas, the airline, have been inundated with, uh, with calls from San Francisco because all the gay community want to come over here and come play for the gay. So that's what Qantas must stand for now. Queers and utters travel around Sydney. <laughs> I heard two gays talking in a bar one night. One said, oh, I like my men like I like my pizzas. 13 inch, 15 inch with a fucking cheesy crust. That's the last fucking clean joke I'm telling, so you can fuck off. <laughs> I can't get to grips with that, you know, the sun being out and it's fucking Christmas. It doesn't make sense to me because I'm always fucking snowed in. My God, fuck, it gets warm here, doesn't it? Good job you don't have to fucking shovel the sun. <laughs> this woman at the hotel left two dogs in the back of the car without opening the windows and it was that hot within 20 minutes to were a fucking Cantonese meal. They're telling me last year some fella in Sydney fell asleep in his garden on a waterbed and he was fucking poached to death. <laughs> it's that hot you see flies hanging around Ted's just to wait for him to cool down. <laughs> I've been in the city today and we, we can, you can get any fucking thing here, anything. Went to a wig shop because I'm, I'm going a little bit thin on top and I said, do you have any wigs? The girl said, we have a nylon wig, it's about $150, but you can't wash it. I said, well, it's no fucking good for me. But we have a cotton one that you can wash and you can comb it and uh, so, 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 and so. And uh, I went, no, I said, I want some spare. Well, we have one wig that we can't seem to get rid of. It's uh, Pamela Anderson's pubic hairs. Oh, I said, fucking have it. She has $6,000. I said, fuck it, I still fucking have it. Should I wrap it? I said, no, I'll eat the cunt now. <laughs> Hey, we're having a fucking good time, aren't we? Yes. In a minute, I'll be playing the piano for ten. Do Beethoven's unfinished symphony. In fact, I'm going to fucking finish it <laughs> for good. <laughs> you fucking worry, I will and all. Boys and girls, uh, I've been doing Blackpool for about twelve years now. You know. Yeah. Lo <laughs> Week in and week out, I see this happening. You know, you get a bus trip of lads, they'll come from Bristol or Wolverhampton or Birmingham or Manchester, wherever. So today, today, today. You know why Manchester City have no supporters? Because when you're kids, you always say, keep off the main road. <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't do requests. <laughs> if you're that important, there seems to be facing you, you ugly twat. <laughs> Face that way, your breath's like a fucking skunk's ass. <laughs> Obviously, when you were circumcised, I threw away the wrong fucking end. <laughs> Have a look, is he laughing? <laughs> <laughs> I've got something that'll shut you up and be fucking zip stuck. <laughs> you should go back to England, there's a fucking tax rebate on April the 1st for the fucking mentally retarded. <laughs> Obviously, the best part of you ran down your fucking mother's piss flap. <laughs> Is he still laughing? <laughs> Is the bus driver here from the fucking mentally handicapped school? Get back to the sewerage farm that could be stocked in and find there's a bucket of shit left. <laughs> he stopped fucking laughing. <laughs> Hang on, he won't fucking see us. He thinks I've gone. <laughs> yeah. We wanted somewhere to eat, and this place is full of those uh, little wrinkly things on sticks, isn't it? Fucking pensioners. <laughs> yeah. hey. My wife likes that Lynn for Christie, you know. You know the Lynn for the runner? Every time he runs, she's standing in the old fucking lunchbox. That's why I could never run. I've got a fucking Christmas amber down there, you know. <laughs> if there's a lot of drugs in spot, how come Linford Christie wasn't stopped at the airport for having a fucking suspicious package? <laughs> the Athletics was on last week and my wife's watching them. She went, eee, aren't them Ethiopians good runners? I says, course they are. There's fucking lions and tigers out there, you daft bastard. <laughs> Did you watch the Commonwealth Games? We won one fucking medal for swimming. And that was an advantage. She was a call girl in Venice, apparently. <laughs> hey, I'm in a pub the other night and a, a, a bit of an argument uh, started with these squaddies. And this squaddie said, oh, I'll rip your big fat fucking face off. I went, <laughs> you and who's army? <laughs> I think I said the wrong thing. My mate said, did you get hurt in the fracas? I said, no, I got kicked in the bollocks. <laughs> You couldn't get to the gents' toilet. It was fucking round jam pack with kids. Well, I was busting for a slash. So I relieved myself in an empty tin of coke. That's my luck. The police were it for drugs. What did I get charged with? Cannabis. <laughs> uh, on the way to the night, I passed this cemetery. It wasn't as big as this bastard. Hey, happy days. Ladies and gentlemen, Beethoven's Unfinished Symphony. Yay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I play the piano, I get a hard on. He said, that's because you play like a cunt. <laughs> I'm sat in the waiting room and there's a fella next to me and he went, ah, chug, 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 chug. I said, ah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you d d doing here? I said, a bit of pot straight trouble. He said, whoa, 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 what's that? I said, ah, piss how you fucking talk. <laughs> I got in to see the doctor. He said, what's the matter, Roy? I said, oh, I don't know. I've got this phobia. I want to lift like a hundred. He said, do you smoke? I said, no. Do you drink a lot? I went, no. <laughs> do you fuck young girls? I went, no. He said, what do you want to lift? You're a fucking hundred for then. 
I said, to be honest, Doctor, I'm, I'm a typical man. I like a shag every night. <laughs> he said, I want you to cut Wednesdays out. I said, that's impossible. That's the only fucking night I go home. <laughs> Funny the other day. I'm on a bus with my grandson, and the bus is going along the road, and two horses in a field. Okay. He went, uh, Grandad, what's, what's happening there? I went, oh, fucking hell. I said, ah, ah, well, look what's gone. Look what's happened there. That horse on top's gone and hurt his leg. And that horse underneath must be his best friend, and he's taken him back to the barn. So that's typical, Grandad. Try to help somebody and they end up fucking you. <laughs> Jack fucked Jill up a hill. Silly Jill was not on the pill. Jack fucks out with a crack. Lucky Jill was on the back. Nine months later, I suppose you heard. Jill gave birth to a ten pound turd. I said, yeah. Fucking yeah! Fucking yeah! Getting fucking boring now, you lot. <laughs> you having a good time, aren't you? Brilliant. Yeah, man, you're a long time. Yeah! Hey! What's that? Stop telling me like Tarzan because your face is like a fucking cheetah's ass. <laughs> Probably wouldn't know which way a lift was going if you had two fucking guesses. The name of town after me, fucking Leatherhead. <laughs> Is he laughing? <laughs> uh, fucking hell, talk with, uh, that's getting around to women again. You know women are fun. Yeah, excuse me, I always apologise. I was talking when you were there. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Like I was talking to my pal, I said, I can't go. And he said, why? I said, oh, I can't go when I've had a drink. Because if I've had a drink, she will not to speak to me. He said, you want someone to speak to you if you've had a drink. Phew, you look lucky good. <laughs> do what I do. I said, what do you do? He said, I'll tell you what I do. When I've had a drink, I just go home and I just weep the fucking... I just get the sheet, just pull it off the bed, head between the legs. <laughs> She's that excited. Oh, 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 oh. Forgets to bollock me. <laughs> I went, right. I'll have another fucking pint. And a whiskey. I didn't know I got up the stairs, to be honest with you. I just whipped the idea down off. I went, hey. I don't know how long I was there, but my fucking face was soggy. I thought I'd better go and have a wash in case she wants a kiss. I opened the bog door. She sat in the bog. I went, no. Oh! She went, shh, you'll wake your fucking mother. Good night, Australia. Thank you. I'll see you again sometime. Bye-bye. Thank you. You are kind. Bye-bye. Thank fuck that's over. I am busting for a piss. I'm wasting away to an elephant. <laughs> I've got no trunks. Some bastard pinched me trunks in Melbourne. Come on, race you. <laughs> Go on, check it out. Come on, have a race. Check right? it out. I've got no trunks, and I'll have to go. <laughs> <laughs>